Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. Uh, we're glad that you're joining us this morning. I'm here with Pastor Taylor. And I think uh, Sunday, uh, uh, the whole worship service uh, was just awesome. It was uh, just in- incredible to be a part of and really, you know, just felt like it prepared, prepared for this week for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, everything that uh, happened Sunday, it was a, a really good day. I thought it was it was so funny when I told Christine Anderson, you know, because I, I just walked up behind her and I said, "I wonder how many angels are getting their wings with every ring of your bells." <laughs> I wonder if she's ever gotten that question before. <laughs> she just—it was so funny because she just, with such a serious deadpan face, she looked at me. She said, "That's really bad theology." <laughs> <laughs> so she told me after yeah. the service, she said, I'm glad your theology really improved. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. She, yeah, she enjoyed yeah. your sermon. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the sermon wasn't based on it's a wonderful life, yeah. although it is a wonderful life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Man, I love this one of my favorite movies. Yeah, so. mine too. Yeah, we're going to be watching it this week with our kids. We yeah. do every year. Yeah. And then we watch a Christmas story. And yeah. of course, we watch Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Well, there you for, go. For whatever reason, that's just our Christmas. Christmas, uh, yeah, uh, a Christmas movie it's, that we watch. You know, some reason I like to watch <laughs> The Wizard of Oz at Christmas. I yeah. don't know why. It just it, it's just fun to I, do I, that I with families. I think the, the flying cool. monkeys have always kind of freaked me out. I, <laughs> yeah. I never liked them. Yeah, and uh, even as a kid, I was afraid of flying monkeys. You yeah. Know? Not that I ever saw one, right? But uh, there in Brownsville, the Gladys Porter Zoo, there was a monkey. That got loose from the Gladys Porter Zoo and ended up in our backyard. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and uh, my twin sister used to have this big, curious George um, monkey, and we thought my my brother Nathan had thrown it up in the tree, and then it started to move, and it was like that ain't curious George. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you have, so, it was, have nightmares yeah, on I don't, a wizard. I just, of us. Yeah, I don't I don't like monkeys or clowns, <laughs> and so <laughs> I remember I had a. a you know, like a grand uncle of some kind that always had a little monkey on his shoulder, and that thing, oh, I hated that thing. Yeah. And, uh, but when my uncle passed away, the, the monkey passed away like a week or two later, just stopped eating and drinking. <laughs> it was so attached to my uncle. Wow. You know? Oh, wow. That's, and that's so, incredible. But wow. anyway, I just, I just don't care for monkeys yeah. or clowns. Yeah. <laughs> clowns. I understand. <laughs> and, and the reason I'm afraid of clowns, I, I was probably three or four, and in Brownsville in February every year, it's the only place in Texas. That celebrates Charo Days, and it's it's basically a Mexican holiday, uh, celebrating freedom and that sort of thing. And uh, there were some clowns on a float. They had these flares, and they're like waving them around and tossing candy to the kids. Well, my dad pushed me forward and my twin sister forward to get some candy, and one of those clowns lit my the hood on my jacket on fire. <laughs> and so my dad was like pounding my head to put that hood out and. You know, I wore that that jacket for a couple of years, and it, you know the the little point of that hood was all cinched. You know, back in the day, uh, they didn't make clothes that were fireproof for kids. <laughs> right. you know? It just. <laughs> So anyway, wow. I've, I've always been afraid of clowns since then because I don't know if they're going to start my hooding on fire. And so anyway. Well, have you ever thought about writing a book of all these things that have happened to you? <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I could. It'd be a comedy routine. Yeah, we would. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I guess that's why we have Coffee with Pastor to hear all of the stories that you, that, that you have experienced. Wow. Well, this is Christmas week, yeah. and we're excited to be able to say Merry Christmas to each yeah. and every one of you. And what, what are you all doing? for Christmas this week. We get an opportunity this week, uh, Wednesday, we leave to go to Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Um, Carrie's family has been gracious to uh, work together. To uh, We rented a cabin back in the spring to reserve a cabin, uh, a nice cabin that fits all of us. There's 16 of us on that side of the family, so it's just hard to squeeze in. Eight kids, eight Carson and Camden are the oldest. Oh wow! And so, so <laughs> eight kids, six year and, and under. So all those kids, it's just good to have all that space and everything. So we're excited. We get to um, go for several days and and broken bow. Now, now you and Carrie came over to our house last evening yeah. with your kids, and after you all left, I'm just going to tell you what we said. 
now we understand why why Taylor and Carrie are so tired. We're tired all the time. <laughs> and your kids have a load of energy, they do. all four of them. They do. And it's amazing. Yeah. My kids used to have that energy, but now my son is 11 years old, and he's starting to go through the change and become a young man, you know, teenager. And and so he's, he's not quite as energetic. And, of course, my 15-year-old, he has to have one to two cups of coffee before he leaves the house and then has one when he gets home you know so he he and i yeah. love in fact elijah and i don't really talk to each other first thing in the morning <laughs> until each of us have a cup of coffee and then we get hey dad hey son yeah <laughs> so this is the way we are but anyway yeah well we we talked about the magnificat um yesterday uh, well two days ago on sunday and uh, out of Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And of course, we looked at Elizabeth, uh, who was barren, mm. who the Lord showed favor to and gave John the Baptist to. Of course, I like to say he was Southern Baptist. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, when you go to Israel with us, if I, I don't know if we would have this opportunity, but when yeah. you go to Israel with us this coming year, December 27th through January 10th of, of 2023, uh, the, the Lower Jordan River Valley uh, there's a spot that you can go to where they believe that that's where John the Baptist was wow. baptizing. And of course, if we go up north to tell Dan, you don't want to baptize anybody up there because the Jordan River is actually rapids up there. Wow. And flows into the Sea of Galilee and comes back down. <clears throat> but by the time it gets to the lower Jordan River Valley, it's just like a meandering river. It's just slow. Wow. It's not rushing or anything. And of course, it's flowing into the Dead Sea at that point. And uh, but I remember going over there and seeing that. So it was in the south. So he was <laughs> he really a was southern. southern he southern, was a southern Baptist. John so, the Baptist. Yes, John the <laughs> Southern Baptist. So anyway, uh, but we were talking about the Magnificat, which uh, you know some scholars think is a poem, but mm. I think it was Mary's song. Mm. And and the beautiful thing about this is I don't think she just came up with it right mm. then. I think these were things that were in her heart. Mm. And I think they were things that are on her mind because she knew her history, the, mm -hmm. the history of Israel. She knew the history of her tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, she knew the history of King David's house because she's she comes from that house along with Joseph. Yeah. And so I, I think she knew all of these things, but it was by the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit at this point that she responds to Elizabeth hmm. uh, ap after Elizabeth says, you know, this is amazing that I've been visited by the mother of my Lord. Yeah. And which to me is just an incredible statement also on Elizabeth's part. Yeah. And which tells me that she as an older woman also knew their history yeah. and knew about the house of David and the way the throne was going to be established uh, forever. So uh, this, this to me is one of the most beautiful mm. songs. Yes. And what, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's so many, I think so many songs even in our culture that try to uh, mimic this mm. song and try to capture what uh, she was saying. And I don't think we could even imagine just what Mary felt here and what was uh, how she was expressing herself, how she was worshiping the the, the Lord, worshiping Jesus, uh, even even right here before um, before his birth. You know, yeah. just it, it's just incredible to see. It shows who Mary is, mm -hmm. um, and uh, not just from the her, family, her character, her character yeah. of who she is. That she was humble enough to worship. You know. Mm. Uh, how she could easily have just taken all of it with pride in her own self. Uh, that you know that this was I'm the, the mother. Of I'm Jesus. the mother of Jesus. That's right. <laughs> you have to listen to me. That's right. But she didn't say that at all. She was just <clears throat> worshiping that of of God, worshiping mm -hmm. the Lord. It's incredible, incredible song. Well, we we both were talking earlier about that song, Mary. Did you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, Mark Lowry sings that song. Well. Um, David Gray, our producer, was telling us uh, that sh he saw a tweet or a meme of somebody that said, quit asking Mary, did you know she was told in Luke chapter 1, <laughs> yeah, exactly. which is true. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the song, yeah. the song really is not as biblical as people may think that sure. it is because yeah. uh, the angel Gabriel came and told her, this is what's going to happen to you. Right. And uh, uh, he says very clearly that the, the Spirit of God is going to come upon her. The Holy mm. Spirit will come up upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you 
in verse 35 of Luke chapter 1. So she mm-hmm. was told very clearly that this is what was going to be yeah. happening. Yeah. And, and she knew that she was going to bear the son uh, that she would name salvation, Yeshua, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus. And uh, so it's when she comes finally to verse 46, uh, she begins to praise God for what, what he's done for mm-hmm. her. I mean, wow. this humble servant. Yeah. And, and she refers to herself even as a bond slave mm-hmm. and, and says, you know, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm in this humble state as your bond slave. And, uh, and from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. Well, mm. of course we do. Yes. Now, this doesn't mean that the Roman Catholic Church is going to just rise up and call her blessed. Right. But she is a blessed woman. to be. And, and what she's intimating is that I've been chosen by God specifically for this very mm. task. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, you know, even, even kind of, <clears throat> I think, saying of all generations, counting her mm. blessed, you know, even foreshadowing that it's going to be the Jews and the Gentiles. All generations mm-hmm. will come to, uh, to, to, you know, to where Mary will be blessed. And not that, again, we put Mary on this pedestal, but we can be reminded how humble she was. Yeah, in that we're, we're not praising Mary. Right. Uh, right. We're praising the Lord right. that he chose her for yeah. this very purpose yeah. and uh, in her humble state. And, and she was already a believer. I'm, I'm, in my mind's eye, I can just imagine talking with her yeah. and hear her saying, you know, it was Bethlehem Ephrata that the mm. prophet Micah said mm-hmm. is going to be blessed because this is where the Messiah is going to be born. Yeah. And, uh, and I've explained this before. When you go to the uh, Israel, uh, Bethlehem is up here and the church of the nativity is up here. But she would have been uh, giving birth to Jesus about halfway down that mountain. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've seen that area, and it's absolutely beautiful uh, yeah. to just think that this is where the Lord was, uh, where, where he was born. Wow. And so uh, she not only praises God for what he's done for her, but then mm-hmm. she glorifies God for his power, holiness, and mercy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the word mercy mm-hmm. there in the Greek, elios, I think it's elios or elios, something like that. Uh, the word for mercy there can can be translated as compassion. Mm. And just think about the compassion uh, that the Lord has, not only for Mary, but for for everybody in the world. When yeah. he says in verse 40, when she says in verse 49, for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name and his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those mm. who fear him. Mm. Well, obviously she feared him. Yeah. And, and then she's saying, but for all of those who fear him. Mm -hmm. Now, this word fear is something very interesting uh, because the the Greek word that's used here for fear is, you know, from where you get phobos, phobia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of times we will say that that fear, we just had a light go out. (laughs) Sometimes that that word fear will say, uh, people will say, well, that just means to reverence God. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth of the matter uh, is that yes, it's to reverence God on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's to come to the realization mm. that He's God and we are not. Yeah. And so, for all those who fear Him, in other words, for all of those who who know who He is and know who they are, mm. uh, they fear the Lord in reverence and respect, but also understanding He's Almighty God and yeah. we're not. Yeah. Incredible. And Incredible. so, when when she says this, it's it's an amazing thing. Uh, to see how she says this in verse 50. Yeah. And of course that, what she quotes there is Psalm 103 verse 17. Mm. And there's 12 different allusions in this passage of scripture wow. Wow. to the Old Testament. Wow. And uh, of course I, I could have spent a lot of time going through all 12 of them, mm-hmm. uh, but we would have been there for another hour yeah. and a half. <laughs> well, I think that that just easily shows how well versed mm-hmm. she was in the scriptures who Mary was that she can just in her song she's singing the the scriptures and yeah. and uh, she knows that this was to come and you know just how she is is rejoicing through through the holiness and mm-hmm. through the the mightiness of this that she was the one who was experiencing this yeah. you know so I, I think she knew that God could have chosen anybody yeah. to do this yeah absolutely and I can't imagine I, I mean I'm humbled that God would even call me to, to mm-hmm. be a pastor and mm-hmm. to be in ministry me too, me too. Yeah. and uh, I, I think I'm just scurrying in the head anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh no we you, don't think you know that. all all the different you may not think so but I do and 
And so, but just thinking about who I am and that the Lord would love me enough mm. that first off, he would call me to salvation. And then secondly, mm. he, that knowing all my flaws, he knows my flaws better than I do. Mm. He would actually say, I want you to be a pastor. I yeah. want you to minister. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's just amazing to me. It's, yeah. it's, it is very, very humbling mm. yeah. uh, when you think about it. Yeah. You know, you can't even approach the worship of the birth of Jesus without humbling yourself, mm. you know, and I think we can learn from Mary that, that, you know, we, again, we get so caught up in, in things of pride, especially seems to in the, this month, in this season, but we must remember to humble ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in verses 51 to 53, mm. uh, Mary reflects on God's power in reversing certain social conditions. Mm. And uh, I think that's an important point uh, mm. because when you start looking uh, in verse 51 to 53, notice what he says. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. Those who are proud in the thoughts mm. of their heart always attack Israel mm -hmm. and, and always try to take them out. And she says, he has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. Mm. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty handed. And so those who, um, I can put it to you this way, those who are elitists, mm. for instance, are going to be brought down low before the yeah. Lord. Yeah. And in fact, the way Paul put it, every knee will bow and every mm. tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Yeah. And I think that's what she's intimating yep. here. And, and, but, it, but it also, and I didn't say this yesterday, but when you think about how his power uh, reverses certain social conditions, Think about the social conditions that we're facing with identity. I did mm. speak about that. Mm -hmm. But even racial and social issues, mm -hmm. you know, it's the gospel that transforms these mm -hmm. things and changes them. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So uh, I, I, I think when she's talking about all of this, um, it goes much further than just bringing the rich down or, mm -hmm. or the haughty or the prideful down, but it's mm -hmm. changing the whole dynamic yeah. and really changing the whole culture. Yeah. Um, you know, especially when Christ comes into the picture. Now think about the millennial reign of Christ, mm. that thousand year reign. It's going to be a, a thousand years of peace on this earth. Mm. Wow. You know, when was the last time that there was peace on this earth? Yeah. At, at any given time, there's at least a hundred, if not more, skirmishes around the wow. world. Wow. You know, it's at so, any given time. Yeah. Wow. And we <clears throat> look forward, oh man, we look forward to that time of, of peace and, uh, uh, you know, but... You know, again, as as we know that we have to trust and believe in Jesus yeah. in order for us to have that peace, and we can have that peace now for sure. But we look forward to the day when we can be in a world where we can exalt the Lord humbly, but we are living in peace with one another too. So. Yeah, I mean, in traveling different places around the world, one one of the things that I see uh, is that. Just about anybody around the world simply wants to live in peace mm -hmm. and security. Yeah, be able to feed their families, be able mm -hmm. to work, be able yeah. to produce things, be able to to do things. This yeah. is the way God made us. Yeah, and uh, there are certain places around the world that don't have what we have here in America. Yeah, and uh, and certainly it's it's a blessing to it, it's God's grace that we're here. Yeah, but it's also God's grace that Israel is where they are. Yeah. Uh, today yes. and uh, the way they continue to expand and build yes and uh, and so we're grateful to the Lord for that even Absolutely. well finally uh, you know Mary recalls God's mercy to Israel mm. and to herself mm -hmm. you know it's about God's compassion uh, he's given help uh, to Israel his servant verse 54 says in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and his descendants forever and that mercy, that compassion towards his people, Israel, still is today. Mm -hmm. And, of, of course, Jesus uh, is not only for Israel, but also for us Gentiles. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the, those two ethnic groups that are in the world, <laughs> Israel right. and, and everybody else. You know? That's right. Yeah, praise and, the Lord that we are now a part of this uh, a part of this being, <clears throat> being the generation after generation. Yeah. We get to be a part of that, that Mary is singing here about so yeah well I, I my son and I saw this bumper sticker on the back of a car he said 
uh, the, the bumper sticker said, I'm a, uh, I have two fans in the, N- I, I'm a fan of two teams in the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles and anybody else that plays the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> 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 so, you know, it's it's like uh, when Jesus came, he came for Israel and anybody and else. Anybody else, you know? that's right. Anybody and else. so it's it's a, it's a beautiful story, mm-hmm. and I think the Magnificat, or like I said, if you're from Texas, the Magnificat. <laughs> right. The Magnificat. <laughs> anyway, the Magnificat is is just a beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful testimony that Mary has mm-hmm. uh, for the Lord uh, that was in her womb at this time. Yeah. Absolutely, and just an, an inc- again reiterate, just incredible to see that this is who Mary is. That she's just, you know, that this is just she's rejoicing to this great state here mm-hmm. in song, and uh, and you know the it, it just reaffirms that the Lord is faithful to choose <laughs> and to to his plan is always good, and even by choosing Mary that. He ha- it's the, the, the purpose, uh, it's the perfect plan yeah. of God, you know. Well, and I think we can both confidently say to those that are watching, he's choosing mm-hmm. you yeah. uh, to come to Jesus Christ. That's right. He, he yeah. wants you to believe. He wants you to trust him and place your faith in him as Lord and Savior. And yeah. it's a matter, especially, I mean, what a great time, Christmas time, yeah. to actually trust Jesus Christ yeah. as your Lord and Best Savior. Best gift that you could ever yeah. receive. Yeah. As far it's it's an everlasting life. It's yeah. it, it's an everlasting gift of life. Yes, and uh, and that's what Jesus brings to us. Yes, absolutely. So. That's wonderful. That's well, awesome. just a just a couple of announcements before we close. Uh, we had announced yesterday that uh, I'm sorry on Sunday, two weeks from Sunday, we're going to be voting on our 2022 faith budget the first Sunday of January after the service. So we want you to be a part of that. Uh, service for that church conference and uh, and then we just have some exciting things coming up in the spring yeah, yeah. and uh, just to see what's going to be going on absolutely now I know that we have talked a little bit on Sunday and even today about the Israel trip we have a yes. meeting coming on January 9th January 9th yeah. the meeting and it's going to be it's remind me at two it's going to be at two, two o'clock two in the o'clock afternoon right yeah. in our in our worship in our center. worship center yeah, yeah. So. Dr. John Turner and Dr. Jared Wellman, uh, the pastor at Tate Springs, and and Dr. John Turner, who is the executive director of the Father's House Foundation, whom we travel with uh, to Israel, will be here, and uh, we're inviting uh, Tate Springs and our church to come and listen to Dr. Turner, and and just to hear about this trip that'll take mm-hmm. place. Uh, we'll leave here around December 27th of 2022, and come back January 10th of, of 2023. Yeah. And I, I will say this. I'm going to spill the beans on this. We're going to go to Israel. Mm. We're going to go to Jordan. Wow. And we're going to dip into Egypt. Wow. And so all three places are part of the trip. Yeah. And um, the, the tour guide in Israel has been the lead archaeologist for the last 20, 25 years. Wow. And uh, so that's going to be exciting. And then we have another famous archaeology um, archaeologists, I should say, that will will be with us for about three days, four days, something wow. like that on the trip. Uh, and and of course, uh, we'll have the tribal chief of the people who own uh, the tribe that owns Petra. Yeah. And so we'll be able to go to Petra, and Remy will be there to lead us in Jordan. And it's just it's exciting to travel with him. He's yeah. he's a great guy. Yeah. And uh, and then Hassan in Egypt, we'll we'll meet him at the border too, probably. A trip you will not want to miss. No, no. You want to be a part the, of this. The, those that have gone with me over there and and that did that very same trip, came back and they were just amazed. Yeah. And and people would say, well, I don't know if I can walk it. Let me tell you, when you get there, there's this particular energy that you oh. can't help but say, man, I'm I'm ready to walk and yeah. ready to go and see. Yeah. And see everything that I believed yeah. in this word. Yeah. They get to see it, yeah. you know, so it's exciting. And that's exciting. Yeah. Well, you asked me, I know uh, we were about to end here, but you asked me what I'm doing for Christmas. Mm-hmm. What are you guys doing? I meant to ask that earlier. Sleeping in. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll be picking up my in-laws in Dallas and bringing them over for Christmas lunch. Yeah, and, that's great. Um, you know, we, we have some other things planned this week. Uh, my boys don't know about it. 
and uh, but but they're here with us today, so yeah. uh, I need to not say it out loud. <laughs> We're going to Six Flags ah, on Thursday oh, fine. for the Christmas thing. Oh, know? that's fine. And uh, so I think that'll be fun. And uh, Cheryl and her friend Whitney are going to be baking all day Thursday. So uh, my Cheryl said, "You and the boys need to leave." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, <laughs> well, be guess exciting. we'll go to Six Flags." Yeah. You know? So. That's but fun. yeah, we're we're gonna do that, and then um, of course Saturday we'll make all the phone calls to family and everything, wishing everybody a happy yeah. birthday, or Merry Christmas, not happy, happy birthday, birthday, Jesus, happy right. birthday, Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we did pick up our cake mix yeah. yesterday, yeah. so we are going to be making yeah. our happy birthday Jesus yeah. cake. Yeah. And uh, if you did pick up a cake, we would love to see pictures on Christmas of posting. And if you didn't pick up a cake, what we did is just uh, it's just a cake mix and frosting and candles and uh, even adults. I think it'd be fun. Just make a cake on Christmas and celebrate the birthday of Jesus and just share that with someone uh, on yeah. Christmas. I think that would be a, a great thing everyone could be a part of. You can just go to the store and buy an easy cake mix and frosting. So. I'll, I'll probably share some of that cake with my next door neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that are yeah. Vietnamese, yeah. and uh, they both know the Lord. Yeah, um, wow. Believe it or not, they're a great, great couple. And yeah. I, I was talking with them yesterday uh, for quite a long time. And then uh, we have this other couple across the street from us. They now Mary Jane always makes uh, cookies for our dog Max. <laughs> she makes uh, cookies for our boys and makes sweet. makes a cake or bread for Cheryl and they uh, every year, every year. Uh, whether it's our birthday, July 4th, Valentine's Day, she's always baking and, wow. and always brings stuff for, for all of us. So. That's great. But That's anyway. wonderful. Oh. Well, uh, we love you all, yeah. and we look forward to seeing you December 26th. Uh, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper on that day and hearing a message, uh, again, out of Luke chapter one, uh, 2. And uh, just looking forward to, to being together uh, to share in the supper, remembering what it is that Jesus has done and why he came to this earth uh, in the way that he did. So we love you. We'll yeah. see you next time with Bibles in our hands and smiles on our faces. You got to raise up. Yeah, I got to raise up. We don't see you before Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. to your family.